I'll just very quickly give you a glimpse of what we've been doing in Portugal. We've been trying to incorporate it at several stages or at several cases, namely the National Strategy for Integrated Coastal Management, which is actually a TIB case study. It's out on the internet if you're interested to look for it. Uh, the Portuguese Maritime Spatial Plan, which is still uh, being uh, closed, uh, in two regional plans and in Portugal and in uh, three municipal plans, of which I will give you a very short uh, brief one to mark and I'll share two municipalities. In Tomar, oh my god. <laughs> 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 but anyway, you wouldn't be able to read at this distance. <laughs> Never mind. What I was trying to show here, and for some reason this was readable a while ago, so I don't know what's happening. Um, it's also not Mexican, so it's not direct translation. Um, but in Tumar, what we only did, we did the technical exercise. So we started by, believe it or not, these are the uh, eco ecosystems, okay? And this will be like the urban systems, then we have the agriculture systems, then we have the forestry systems, and then we have the inland water systems, okay? And then here, these are the, um, the types of uh, ecosystem services, the so regulation, provision, etc. And here, uh, the ecosystem services actually identified for the different types of ecosystems for the, uh, the, the different types of um, ecosystem services. So we did identify what were the ecosystem services such as, for example, uh, climate regulation or, uh, or um, uh, soil, uh, soil uh, regulation and we tried to, ah, you see, it is in English, so this is going to be readable. Uh, this would be the main beneficiaries which we identified and then this is the final table which is here per mainly to indicate that we have the main ecosystem services uh, identified between existing and potential, we have the main beneficiaries, the direct and indirect drivers and we have the types of impacts on human well-being. So this last column, which comes and is an interpretation of the previous information, is a critical input into the strategic environmental assessment. On the other case of ships, most finishing part, don't worry, we have identified, this has actually been one of my students' cases this year, we have identified the different ecosystem services and we have mapped them. Uh, we have um, specifically mapped them in Google Images as well to define the boundaries of these ecosystem services. We have listed the services per type of ecosystem. I won't get into the detail because we don't have the time. Uh, we have identified for each specific service the beneficiaries and the drivers of change. My students have been out in the field interviewing several of these beneficiaries more to get, to get an impression of their perception of relevance, interest and urgency in protecting these ecosystem services. We have um, identified shared interests between different ecosystem, uh, sorry, between different stakeholders in relation to the same ecosystem services, which is very relevant in a way to create lobby groups in support of different ecosystem services. We have classified uh, the different uh, stakeholders in terms of who are the key players, who are those that need to keep kept satisfied or be kept informed or those that have a minimum effort in relation to a particular uh, ecosystem, so if you wish, an interest influence matrix. And uh, this is an interesting image from one of, uh, one of the groups produced which shows uh, in relation to one particular ecosystem, wetlands, what are the various types of services, the actual services of the ecosystem, who are the stakeholders in this next stream, what are the drivers of change and the human well-being objectives. So this is the kind of outcome that we can have from a preliminary study, this is far from being completed as I mentioned. Uh, the general methodological steps 
are therefore just uh, very simply put here, first identification of stakeholders, stakeholder engagement through interview, dedicated workshop, stakeholder mapping, exactly to uh, look for their interrelationships, the influence and the interest they have towards ecosystem services, problems mapping, mind mapping, in order to identify what are in a way the pressures and related to drivers, and then the valuation in terms of economic and socio-ecological terms, which we will, uh, that's the next step that we're moving for. So concluding, um, in terms of even looking around internationally, uh, integration of environment ecosystem services in SCI is still in its infancy. Uh, we experience difficulties, and uh, particularly in Portugal, one of the big difficulties is uh, the resistance of the natural, the nature conservation authorities in considering uh, the concept of ecosystem services. Uh, there are also one other difficulties are evaluation methods and the uh, association of uh, or attribution of the specific economic value to a number of services, which uh, me quantitative measure is rather difficult. However, the good news is that at Opship in particular, both the municipality and uh, economic and social interest stakeholders are extremely excited with this exercise and they are completely available to participate in further uh, workshops and other uh, engagement forms. So that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you very much.